This is fascinating. Uh, Reuters re- reports that farmers insurance, and I believe this is the first time this has ever happened, has filed nine class action suits last month against nearly 200 communities in the Chicago area, arguing that local governments should have known rising global temperatures would lead to heavier, uh, lead to heavier rains and did not do enough to fortify their sewers and stormwater drains. This is really important because if they win this class action suit, you know, you got uh, presumably you had heavy rains, sewers overflowed, storm waters uh, drains overflowed, people's houses got. Um, maybe their houses got, uh, their, their basements got flooded. Maybe it caused damage to cars, uh, other private property that was insured and by farmers. And the farmer's insurance is saying you had every reason to know the potential for this. And you did not take steps to mitigate the risk to private property if they win this. Now, what's happening is that the lawyers for the local uh, uh, governments are going to argue that government immunity protects them from from these uh, these, uh, sorts of class action. Um, This is the same thing that the uh, Army Corps of Engineers in the uh, suits that followed Hurricane Katrina was the way that they escaped any liability here in terms of government payouts to private insurance companies or to individuals. That is secondary. The point is we are now seeing insurance companies saying, look, you've, you've seen the data. You're aware of the likelihood of this increasing, and you are not mitigating the risks. We will see more of these cases, said Michael Gerard, director of the Center for Climate Change Law at Columbia Law School in New York. No one is expected to plan for a 500-year storm, but if horrible events are happening with increasing frequency, that may shift the duties onto municipalities. Now, in a lawsuit like this, who will pay the damages? It is the taxpayers. And this is going to put pressure on local communities. And frankly, I don't see why it wouldn't be the case. States and the federal government, ultimately, to do more to mitigate for climate change disasters. Because the data is there. I mean, this is this is the type of thing that we need to see now. They want cities to push, I mean, to basically invest in prevention as a way to avoid future lawsuits. It's going to cause a certain adapt, uh, you know, adapting by localities. And then what you're going to see is an increased political will to actually fight the source of the problem. You know, we spoke to that uh, Rolling Stone reporter, I guess it was some time ago, maybe it was last fall, about the fact that all of the best scientific research, all of the experts, including those from uh, from Holland that were flown in to see if they could save Miami in the future, they all said, no, not happening. Rising sea levels, we know how to build dams, but you guys are on limestone. It's going to seep up. Miami is done. The more that things like this happen, the more it will create the will, the political will to address it, and they won't be able to escape it. I mean, there was that story about the uh, emergency disaster relief guy who went ahead uh, to a committee in uh, the Florida state legislature to explain um, what the implications of rising sea levels are going to be, and he got a 15-minute lecture on the book of Genesis by one of the state lawmakers. 
And no, Genesis is not the name of a book about uh, preparing for climate change. Well, uh, maybe it is. I don't know. Did you see Noah? Maybe we should do that.